Welcome. Today we're going to discuss antimatter batteries, how they work, and why they would be ideal for spacecraft. To start off, let's talk about radioisotopes. If you visit periodictable.com, you can see the radioisotopes of any element, their half-life, and their decay chain. What's great about using these isotopes in generators is that most of them instantly decay into a stable element. A general way to harvest antimatter as electricity is to use silicon and graphite. Silicon is a photoelectric material, so it's good at converting light, including gamma rays, into electricity. Graphite is a thermoelectric material, which means it converts heat into electricity, and gamma rays carry a lot of heat. You might be wondering where I got the gamma rays. Well, when antimatter collides with normal matter, they destroy each other and burst into gamma. I spent the last month scouring the periodic table for the ideal antimatter isotope. What I realized was two forms of possible antimatter electrical generators. One being a cyclotron that collides hydrogen with a target material like calcium or potassium, which releases huge bursts of antimatter due to their very short half-life which compensates for the fact that you need to keep colliding hydrogen with the now stable target to continue the extraction of energy. For example, stable calcium-40 gets hit with hydrogen and decays into calcium-39, which instantly decays into stable potassium. Hit the stable potassium with hydrogen, you get potassium-38, which decays into argon and so on. This idea could be compared to or viewed as a short-term supercapacitor, whereas my other idea acts as more a long-term battery. This other idea focuses on antimatter isotopes with longer half-lives, the only compromise being that they emit less antimatter than shorter-lived isotopes. Aluminum-26, sodium-22, Yttrium-88 and Bismuth-208 are some of these isotopes. In my video about lithium fission ships, I briefly talk about aluminum-26. This isotope of aluminum has a half-life of 717,000 years. Sodium-22 has a half-life of 2.7 years. Yttrium-88 has a half-life a little over 100 days, and Bismuth-208 has a half-life around 300,000 years. So what would be the best isotope to use in an antimatter battery and for what application? On this list, aluminum-26 has the longest half-life and the highest energy decay at almost 3 million electron volts, and it decays into stable magnesium-26, which can be used as a nutritional supplement, can be a component of metal alloys, and can possibly be used as rocket fuel as it is very reactive and alkaline. This already seems like the best option, but let's review the others. Sodium-22 ranks third place for longest half-life and fourth place for highest energy decay. Yttrium-88 ranks fourth place in longest half-life but ranks second place in highest energy decay. Bismuth-208 ranks second place for longest half-life and third place for highest energy decay. Bismuth and yttrium are pretty heavy, whereas aluminum and sodium are much lighter. Sodium is only 15% lighter than aluminum and way less efficient for antimatter generation. For antimatter batteries, aluminum-26 is the obvious choice. It's highly efficient, lightweight, and very cheap. A general design for this battery, or more specifically, positron-catalyzed gamma-harvesting thermo-photoelectric generator, would be a roll of aluminum-26 foil surrounded by walls of graphite and silicon, or quartz, with a lead shell whose thickness depends on the size of the generator. This kind of generator would be ideal for a personal spacecraft, power grids, homestead generators, and it is very cheap to make. That'll be all for today. I hope you liked what you learned. Don't miss our next videos about cymatic force fields and nuclear alchemy. 
We release a video every Thursday, so stay tuned by subscribing. Don't forget to like and share. We greatly appreciate your awareness and willingness to learn. We hope to see you in the next video. This is Penumbra Aerospace, signing off.